Etiquette, manners, and rituals. These are modes of behavior that are linked to the past, and most of us practice them in our daily relationship with food. Etiquette refers to the rules of behavior in social situations. The first rules of etiquette probably came about when people started to band together to hunt and to protect one another. If nothing else, prehistoric people needed rules about sharing the food they had gathered. Since then, rules of behavior have been refined. Around food in particular, etiquette and manners are tailored to suit each culture. But whether you shake hands, hug, or bow when you greet your guest, the intent is to welcome them. This kind of body language conveys a message. It is a token of friendship and establishes a kind of comfort zone. Manners refer to how each of us interprets the rules of etiquette, how we act in social settings. Good manners create a good impression. Not knowing correct manners will have the opposite effect. Is it good manners for a man to wear a hat to the table? No, you gotta do it. No, we do not. And over time, could this change? No, I'm not really. For me personally, knowing my manners makes me feel confident. Um, it sure comes in handy around your parents' friends or your like, grandma's house. Uh, she thinks it's really rude when you don't know your manners, and she'd say the hats are a total no-no. <laughs> the role of host and guest, of giving and receiving, is a basic human relationship. Rules of etiquette apply across all cultures. The hostess usually offers guests her best tableware and tastiest treats. Her guests give compliments and enjoy the special treatment. But not every home has a table for guests. In Samoa, families enjoy their meals on the floor, and their culture has its rules of etiquette that apply. The man of this house eats with the guests while the women serve them. Everyone sits cross-legged, but takes care not to point the soles of their feet at anyone else. This is because many Asian Pacific cultures see the head as the holiest part of the body, and the bottom of the feet as the least holy and therefore to expose them is considered bad-mannered. It is also considered polite to not speak while eating. Customs and manners may differ between cultures, but some things are remarkably similar the whole world over, like the importance of cleanliness or showing consideration for others. As a guest, sometimes you have to be willing to do things a bit differently than you're used to. This will introduce you to new ideas and to a whole new realm of great tasting food. How do we treat our guests? When you arrive home with a friend, do you immediately assume the role of host? Are refreshments compulsory? What message is your friend receiving when you forget to offer him a snack? Today, as in ancient times, eating in front of a guest is considered thoughtless and extremely rude. Oh! Where are my manners? Would you like something? Yeah. Oh, help yourself. I'm so sorry. Sharing food sends an unspoken message of trust. My age group definitely has some issues you have to work on. Everyone's pretty laid back nowadays. Um, my family barely even sits down for a dinner, family dinner. We're either at sports or got different things to do. Do we adjust our modes of behavior to enjoy formal and less formal situations? In a cafe with friends, the presentation of food is familiar and it's easy to feel confident about eating the food that's served. To enjoy eating in a fancy restaurant, it might be helpful to have a basic understanding of a formal place setting. So when you go into a restaurant, don't be afraid. This isn't that scary. You just work from your outside in. This is for your tea. This is for your soup. This is your main course knife. This is for your salad fork, and this is your main course fork. Over here is your bread and butter plate with your buttering knife. Here's your serviette. When you have it, just take it out over your lap. Here's your bowl for either your soup or your salad. This is your water goblet, and this is your tea cup and the saucer. Formal or casual, there are table manners that suit every gathering. Finger food, trendy food, 
traditional food, junk food? Is it sustenance or inspiration? Is this a meal or entertainment? And to what extent is it a ritual? Rituals are traditional practices or ceremonies that over the years have become symbols of important historical events or signatures of a culture's values. Religions of the world practice rituals that spring from pivotal events in their history. Muslims, Buddhists, Jews and Christians represent some of the religions that have at the heart of their faith a special ritual with food. Nourishment of the body becomes symbolic for nourishment of the spirit. Special Christian services, such as weddings, baptisms, and funerals, will often include a celebration called the Mass. This centers around the ritual of Holy Communion, also known as the Eucharist. But when did the ritual of the Eucharist begin? What is the origin of this ritual with bread and wine? The Christian Mass dates back more than 2,000 years to the Last Supper. During this meal, Christ identified himself with the bread and wine and asked the disciples to share these in remembrance of him. The bread is called the host, and many congregations use a thin wafer of the consecrated bread for distribution. To what extent does etiquette enhance the spiritual experience? Many rituals have cultural origins. The Japanese tea ceremony is not only about making a cup of tea. It teaches a disciplined creative outlook, which can then be applied to the rest of your life. Chado, or the way of tea, dates back 400 years when first practiced by Buddhist monks. Its complex rules of etiquette take years to learn and have become standards for social behavior. Traditionally, the tea ceremony takes place in a modest tea hut, set within the natural beauty of a Japanese garden. It is an art that attempts to achieve harmony with nature and the people in the room. In Japan, a tea master will attract thousands of people. Around the world, there is ever-increasing enrollment in tea lessons as present-day interest grows. Patty has studied alongside her mother since she was 13 years old. My role as a host is to prepare the entire tea room before the guests arrive. Uh, that includes um, setting up the alcove with some flower arrangements and a scroll. On the scroll, we have a kanji character that says wa. Wa is harmony, and harmony is what, is, the, is what we want to create in the tea room for the guests. The guests also have a particular etiquette they must follow. They would have to enter through a gate, walk along um, step stones in single file, and admire the um, natural beauty of their surroundings that's around the tea house as well. Um, this is required by the guests. They must do it before entering the tea house. Say means cleanliness and orderliness. Um, it's a very important part of the tea ceremony and the study of tea in a physical and spiritual sense. I would always serve them a tray of sweets and I would go through certain motions to um, show um, my respect for everybody in the tea room as well before I serve them any tea. I like the tea ceremony very much because it teaches me both as a guest and as a host to be very gracious, uh, to be um, very polite and to keep my composure as well. Today the Japanese tea ceremony reflects as closely as possible the ancient meditative practices of Zen Buddhism from the 15th century. The host and guest practice traditional etiquette as it's been handed down from generation to generation. Harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility are the key elements of tea.
so wherever and whenever、um, people are gathered for the Japanese tea ceremony, we are trying to achieve the peacefulness and the tranquility, and that is the whole purpose of tea. The celebration of Hanukkah in early December is a time when Jewish people celebrate a festival of light. The traditional foods of Hanukkah are donuts and latkes, which are small potato pancakes fried in oil. The significance of eating foods cooked in oil dates back to ancient times. It marks an important historical victory of the Jews over the Syrians more than 2,000 years ago. When they rebelled and won their freedom to worship their own god, afterwards the Jewish temple in Jerusalem needed to be rededicated. To do this, it was necessary to relight the temple menorah that is meant to burn all the time. There was only enough oil for one day, but the menorah miraculously stayed alight for eight days until new oil was ready. That is why, on the eighth night of the festival, all eight candles on the menorah are lit. In this celebration, families use special foods to keep their traditions alive and to pass on the meaning of Hanukkah to their children. Their kitchen serves as a rich archive of a historic event. With each season of celebration, grocery shelves fill up with commercially produced specialty foods. Busy lifestyles and the convenience of ready-made products make these seasonal foods very popular. But home-baked goodies often seem to contain magic ingredients that are difficult to measure or duplicate, and handled with care, each chef's creation is unique. Birthdays, weddings, anniversaries—whatever the theme, new trends blend with old traditions. Wedding cake, the centerpiece of many wedding feasts. The honor of baking the wedding cake may go to an important family member, but many of the decisions still fall to the bride. Designer cake versus home baked, chocolate cake or white cake, and what to put on top. She has to factor in her budget restraints and consideration for her family as well. Look at this one. Do celebrative foods reflect the seasons? The Christian celebration of Easter always falls within spring. Spring festivities date back to the ancients, who celebrated the return of the sun, the renewal of plant and animal life. And the fresh start that this implies, and considering that Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Christ, it's fitting that the shapes and colors of many Easter foods symbolize renewal and rebirth. The prolific rabbit in chocolate form, along with chicks, lambs, and eggs of every size and color, what foods better to represent new life? The celebrative foods of winter are rather hearty, rich, and filling, as though to guard us from the cold. Baking and decorating for Christmas have become family rituals at this time of year. To serve to company, to give away as gifts, or for the fun of baking them, shortbread cookies are a delicious Christmas tradition. There is comfort in keeping traditions alive, and similar to the ancients who gathered around a fire for warmth, the cold dark of winter is still a time when families delight in sharing a feast. Sharing a traditional Christmas dinner captures the essence of these holidays. How many teenagers will admit that they are as entrenched in rituals and etiquette as anyone? Teenagers establish modes of behavior that are unique to their own social group. They consult top fashion magazines and shop to create a certain look. Through current music, movies, and television, their language and etiquette are being influenced all the time. 
These teens are about to try something different. Shannon is planning a dinner party to celebrate her friend Marley's 17th birthday. So what are you guys up to tonight? I don't know, probably just plan Marley's party next weekend. Take 17, you guys gonna come? Sounds like a plan. Uh, food? Yeah, but it's like yeah. formal, guys. You guys have to get out of your grubby clothes and, you know, dress up. Uh, what day? Nice. <laughs> her friends are confident that with a bit of planning, a dinner party will be a lot of fun. No occasion comes together without a plan. And depending on how special the event, it can take a concerted effort. Well, Dave and Marley helped with the planning, and we uh, narrowed down our party menu to something that would look good, taste good, and something that everyone could get involved in. So we decided on chicken shish kebabs. We did consider everyone's dietary needs, and there were no vegetarians. Um, if there were, we would have provided tofu for the shish kebabs. Right. The host considers many factors so in planning a dinner egg. party. Yeah. Cooking yeah. skills, yeah. kitchen facilities, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. number of guests, the size There's of the budget, and what seasonal foods food. will be available. Organizing is totally my specialty, so I got on the computer and put some invitations together. And maybe everyone will realize that it's more of a formal dinner. My friends know me really well, so I think they can handle it. Well, at parties, we normally just order a pizza, have chips, um, pop, and we just sit down, put our feet up, watch TV, rent a movie, and just, we're totally casual. I hope my invitations will set the tone that it's more formal and it's not a pizza party. It's a little bit out of our league, but I think we'll have fun. Marley volunteered to drive me to the grocery store. To stay within our budget, we brought our list and our calculator. All the produce looked really fresh. Um, the garden vegetables were in season right now, so it was a good price, and we stayed within our budget. Neither of us wanted to spend time making the appetizers, so we thought sushi would be a good idea. Sushi is very expensive, so we obviously had to budget the amount that we got. Setting the table sets the scene and ambience of the room. Subtle details, such as translucent colors, fresh flowers and candles, will create a warm, relaxed atmosphere. The day of the dinner, Dave set the table and Marley and I prepared the vegetables. A good host gets organized before the guests arrive and takes food preparation to as near ready a stage as possible. The host greets the guests when they arrive. With these close friends, no introductions are necessary. Nonetheless, the hostess is polite and welcoming. The guests should arrive on time, dressed for the occasion, and offer to help. Shannon planned a menu that would involve her guests in some of the food preparation. As it turned out, this was the hit of the party. When the guests arrived, uh, everyone offered to help, so I got Dawn to do the garlic bread, uh, Brandon got the drinks going, and Marley served the sushi. Allowing guests to help creates a relaxed atmosphere, with the added benefit of taking some of the pressure off the host. Offering an appetizer that is popular with your guests is a great way to start off the meal. Cheers to Molly's 17th birthday. The menu determines the style of the presentation. While many hosts like to cook in advance and cater the entire meal to their guests, the idea of getting everyone involved was a good one. It allowed guests, in a spirit of fun, to select the foods and vegetables they preferred. I 
I was happy everyone helped with food because it would have been next to impossible for me to cater the whole meal. Compliments to the chef, please and thank you. Most of us follow a kind of protocol, passed along from generation to generation by parents and grandparents. My grandma says if you ever leave the table, you must excuse yourself, like if the phone rings or something. You never eat with your mouth open, you never use your knife as a toothpick, and you don't bring unpleasant topics to the table. You use your napkin, not your sleeve, always compliment the chef, and for my brothers, don't wear a hat at the table. If there's anything I've learned as a hostess is to take each detail at a time, and everything kind of strings together. I think putting those candles on the dessert made it look even better than a traditional cake. Personal taste and a little risk taking can make a celebrative meal memorable. You gotta know if your party is going well or not, and the hostess always has a feeling. Our dinner was amazing, we were relaxed, and we had lots of fun. I'm proud we tried something different, and it all worked out. The final stage is evaluating whether your party was a success. After a party, everyone always comes together and talks about what's been going on the night before, how the party went, if the dinner was good, if everyone got along. I think we'd give ourselves 10 out of 10 for sure. Socializing with food is an activity that everyone enjoys on a daily basis. And it's important to know how to adjust our behavior to suit special occasions, to respect other cultures, and to honor old traditions. Future generations will in fact be remembering us and honoring us in the way they practice etiquette, manners, and rituals with food. <laughs>